It's an honor to introduce the first of those two keynotes, a doctor or professor who needs really no introduction to this crowd, but it's an honor to introduce Dr. Bruno Frey, who is the professor for economics and well-being, and well-being at the University of Basel. You know Dr. Frey, Dr. Frey has been one of the most influential economists in the world, and he's going to talk to us this morning about one of his other expertise, areas of expertise, and that is direct democracy. So please welcome Dr. Bruno Frey. I am an opera fan. I like to hear the plays by Donizetti, Verdi, and Mozart. And so I quite often go to the opera house in Zurich. However, I'm in a very small minority. Only 8% of the population ever go to the opera house. So you can perhaps understand that I was appalled when I heard that there would be a referendum on the Opera House of Zurich. Of course, I feared that the 92% which never ever go to the Opera House would vote no, especially as the money involved was huge, something like 100,000, uh, 100 million Swiss francs per year. So it was a real issue. What was the result? 73% of the population voted yes. Why? That is very surprising, of course. 92% never go to the opera but 73% approved it. Why was this the case? The word is involvement. The opera, by two parts, the director of the opera house, Pereira, went to hundreds of small meetings and talked to people why opera is important. An opera, and, and he was very engaged. On the other hand, the, the normal population who never went to the opera house heard for the first time that there is some value in going to the opera and having operas played. And that is one of the results of direct uh, democracy. Why do I tell you this story about the opera house? Of course, because we will have a referendum, 6th of June, on the basic income in Switzerland. The basic income uh, in Switzerland is due to an initiative. And therefore, I speak English, I don't speak to the Swiss, they know all this. It's the foreigners here who do not know what uh, direct democracy is. <laughs> and that's serious. An initiative is something politicians hate because it comes from outside of the political establishment. And even Swiss politicians would be so glad to suppress initiatives because they don't like to talk about certain things. And politicians wouldn't have talked about uh, basic income or about the Opera House, because, of course, politicians always know better. Within one week after having been elected to the parliament, they know everything better. That is exactly uh, what happens. Now, an initiative in the case of Switzerland, because it involves changing the constitution, uh, means that there must be a majority of the voters saying yes and a majority of the 26 cantons. You see, a direct democracy has to do with content, not with persons, with content. Now, there are many counter-arguments against uh, direct democracy. I would like to 
to uh, discuss four. The first one is, how can you leave a decision about now basic income to the uninformed people? People are uninformed, they don't know anything. Wrong. Totally wrong. It's not a matter of whether being informed, it's a matter of getting informed. And when you have the power to decide to, to throw a vote, then you start to inform yourself. That is, has been proved empirically. In those countries in the European Union where the population had a vote on the euro, people were much better informed what the euro means. Compare that to Switzerland, uh, sorry, compare that to Germany. There, the politicians always said, the Denmark, that is the great thing of Germany. And the next day, the Chancellor Kohl said, now we, ent uh, now we take the euro. No serious discussion in the population, therefore, of course, no information. Why should a German be informed about the euro? It's useless. In Switzerland, it's different. We have the vote. The second uh, counter-argument against direct democracy is that the normal population is uneducated. I'm very skeptical there too. Look at what experts and the super intelligent people have done to us in the 20th century. Wars and all kinds of terrible things. Or take an, a really good expert, uh, Le Corbusier. He wanted, to, he wanted to pull down Paris in order to have great, wonderful streets. An expert. Better listen to the population, they didn't want to have that, and now we see that this was a right decision. The third counter-argument is direct democracy is dangerous. All the Germans believe that because they have been indoctrinated over years and years to, to believe that Hitler was, uh, was introduced by direct democracy. Total nonsense, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. There was never, never a majority for Hitler. There was no referendum in favor of Hitler, of course, after he was in power and the SS was watching what you vote. That was uh, different. But under free conditions, the, uh, the, uh, Hitler was never uh, voted in power. The fourth counter-argument, direct democracy is slow. Take women voting. We introduced it in 1971 only. I think that's, that's late. <laughs> However, it was slightly before the Americans gave the voting power, in fact, to the blacks. We were before the Americans. <laughs> uh, direct democracy produces many surprising results. I, I gave you the example of the Opera House, but also there we had referenda on the question would you like to work less hours? It was turned down. People, Swiss people, like to work. Or, would you like to have more longer holidays? Turned down. People like to work and not only to be on holidays. So, there are some surprising results. I think in a, a very important issue is that in a direct democracy, the role of experts is totally different. It's not that the experts or professors like me go to the government and say, do this and that because it's the right thing to do. No. It's an indirect influence. We, experts and professors, 
have to talk to the people. It's an input into the political process, and that's a quite different thing than telling government what to do. Now, the popular ref referendum, referendum coming up on basic income has already visible consequences. First of all, the word Grundeinkommen, basic income, has become known. People didn't know that before. That is a very important effect of this direct democratic uh, discourse before the uh, vote. The second is, the second effect is that people slowly get informed about the aspects of basic income. You cannot open a Swiss newspaper today without finding an article on basic income. Turn, out, uh, uh, turn up the radio or look at TV, a lot of discussions on basic income. And the third uh, effect of having a referendum on, direct, uh, on, uh, uh, on basic income certainly is that people get the arguments for and against, and then they can decide uh, uh, with, with good reason how to cast their vote. So I think that direct democracy is a really unique institution, unique in the sense that discussion and decision go together. Take other countries, take France, take Germany. There the intellectuals talk and talk and discuss to no avail, because there is no vote at the end. In Switzerland, people are not so good in discussing. Well, we are a little bit not so good because, uh, uh, because uh, it's, it's, uh, we are um, still an agrarian uh, society, more or less, while the Germans, mm, French. Uh, but we know that this discussion is important because there is a decision at the end. So it's both a procedural utility gained as well as a decision utility. And so I think that direct democracy is the future. Thank you. So Dr. Fry, we, we, we did give women the vote, the right to vote in 1920 in the US. But, but, but we have this crazy thing called the Electoral College where we pretend like we have direct democracy for presidential elections, yet we don't. So, no, you didn't have, uh, the blacks didn't have the actual right to vote. That's a, that's a fair point, but we're comparing women. <laughs> we're comparing women it's a, with, with blacks. Oh, yes, we can. All right, one question, one question, one you're question American, for Dr. You, Fry. You must be politically I'm a, li correct. I'm a little, little <laughs> defensive about the U.S. system. One question for Dr. Fry. Preferably from a woman. Or from a black. Well, I already gave you my question, but... <laughs> I think okay. Okay. democracy so, is good. Oh. Thank you, Robin Chase. Um, my question is, as I listen to you, it seems, like, it seems like it works incredibly well when you have one question, I don't know, every three months. But if I think of direct democracy, where am I voting on... What's the budget for transport in my neighborhood in Cambridge and the education budget? It seems like you get discussion and you can get that when you minimize the number and frequency of mm -hmm. those things. Uh, thank you very much. We have four uh, dates at which, uh, on which um, uh, votes are taken, a referenda uh, happen. We can distinguish quite well, because there are usually two or so at the federal level, about one or two at the cantonal level, and one or two at the local level. And they are different. And so, though we vote on six, we can distinguish them reasonably well. But you are right, some referenda are uninteresting. And so, <laughs> the rate of vote participation is very low. 
but that's totally okay. Not everything in life is very important. However, when it comes, for instance, to joining the European Union and, and, and very important things, or uh, yes, joining the European Union, then the vote participation jumps up and the discussion gets more in intensive. No, I, I agree. I, th I think it would be ridiculous to leave everything to, uh, to referenda. However, uh, the initiatives, and, and I think that is an interesting point, that an initiative is against the establishment. In, in other countries, the outsiders have no chance of engaging in politics in a regular, civilized way. They have to go to the streets as we now observe in France. Much, much more to discuss, but we have to keep the program moving so you can find Dr. Fry during our break, which is after our next keynote. Please join me in thanking Dr. Bruno Fry. <laughs> <laughs>